Okay. So yeah, this is where we always start our tours. This is the front of the lab. Uh, we have two 3D printers right here. Uh, we just have a uh, Prusa i3, and then we have a Bamboo Lab P1S. Uh, they're not currently running right now. It's kind of the end of the day, so <laughs> I'll set those up later. Mm -hmm. um, so up here we have our project wall of highlighted projects. So I'd like to point out a couple of them. So this one is one of our newest projects. This is, a, we call it the magical OR key. So it's a key that we give to child patients when they're on their way to the operating room. Uh, that whoever's wheeling them to the operating room, they tell them a story of a magical key and how the magical key will open their pathway to get to the operating room. So as they're headed towards there, then this is used as kind of a distraction to help ease some anxiety in a pretty intense moment for them. So yeah, this is a pretty new one. Uh, this one is a really big success story. So this patient, her name is Lotus. She was in a skiing accident when she was 13 years old and it left her paralyzed and in a wheelchair. So she lost some of her gross motor skills. So she couldn't really, or she lost some of her fine motor skills. So she couldn't really like squeeze her hands or be like nimble with her fingers. And she really loved to play this game Valorant. And we kind of have a little image up there of her playing it. So she came down to the lab with her patient care tech, Dan, and they created this custom keyboard so she could still play her game. So we binded some keys to each of these buttons. And this is kind of like the mouse right here. So she could use this keyboard to play her game again. And this was really big because, you know, it kind of enabled her to be able to do something she loved after she lost it in the accident. And the company who made this game, Riot Games, they actually heard this story and they flew her out to California and she got to play with their esports team. So yeah, this is a pretty big success story we like to highlight. Uh, this one right here is an electronics project that we did recently. Uh, it's a shoe buzzer project. So um, in, up in the rehab gym, sometimes there's patients who are working on their walking and so like amputated patients, um, like if they step on, this is where Rosa would be good because she knows the medical stuff. Mm -hmm. So with this project, they're trying to get the patients to walk with their heels instead of on the tips of their toes like this. So we made this buzzer that would attach to the bottom of here. And then as they stepped, it'd make kind of an annoying buzzing noise. So yeah, this is for some of the patients with Alzheimer's as well, because they would kind of forget sometimes how they were supposed to walk. So this tool kind of helps them with that. Uh, right here we have just some wheelchair racing gloves that uh, one of our OTs, Donnie Ray, came down and printed and she put this rubber on. So then uh, there's a patient who wanted to do long distance wheelchair racing. They were able to use these prints to kind of help them with that hobby of theirs. Uh, yeah, we'll come back over here. So another thing we do is um, we kind of help the biomed department with making replacement parts for machines. So in the hospital, sometimes when a small piece of a machine breaks, the company wants you to buy a whole new machine to replace the old one, which can get very costly as you can imagine. So with the lab here, we're able to come down and recreate the replacement parts. So this is just a part of the microscope that was broken and needed replaced. So the biomed came down, modeled this up, and then we were able to replace the microscope piece and just save thousands of dollars. Just this cost maybe like $3 max <laughs> for the replacement part. So yeah, that's another big thing we do. Uh, and then this last one I'll highlight is an insulin abdomen trainer. So at the lab, we can do these kind of fleshy uh, silicone models. And this is a model that one of our diabetes care navigators use to teach how to inject insulin. So she would help put it up to the patients and then they could kind of practice like where they were going to inject and then this lump right here, this is called a lipohypertrophy. 
think I said that right, like lipohypertrophy. <laughs> and this is what happens when you inject the insulin in the same spot too many times, you kind of get this bump right here. So this model kind of highlights why it's important to rotate your insulin injection for diabetes patients. So yeah, that's kind of some highlighted projects and we can go take a look around the lab. So right here is our electronic station. So we do a lot with sensors and adapting some toys. Um, so here's kind of some projects in progress. So uh, this one isn't hooked up currently, but we like to make these push buttons for kids who don't have those fine motor skills to say like, like press this button right here. We would hook up this button to this device and then you know you can press that and turn on different electronics projects. Uh, this one right here is kind of a big project and I can actually set it up really quick. Let's see, I usually do this show. So yeah, this tool is used for a patient with uh, this disease called Adams-Oliver disease. And since he was little, he's had to, he's had to um, eat kind of liquid food. So he has a big food aversion and we're trying to get him to be able to eat solid foods eventually. And since food isn't a motivator for him, we thought maybe a YouTube video would be a motivator. So we created uh, this project called the Bite Switch. So as you can see on the screen, as he takes a bite, it kind of tracks uh, the amount of force he's putting on the bite sensor. And once he reaches the goal that you set, it will press play on a YouTube video or a set amount of time. And then we can keep going as the session moves on. We can increase the amount of bites he needs to take, or we can do a full reset and change the threshold of the bite. So we can use this tool in his therapy. And as he grows and gets stronger, then we can kind of keep increasing the strength to help him be able to chew some solid foods again. So yeah, that's a big electronics project we're working on right now. And then yeah, we'll kind of go over here to the silicone station. We have another 3D printer right here. So yeah, right here is a project I'd like to highlight. This is an IV arm that one of our night resource nurses, Jess, is working on. So Jess has to go around the hospital and kind of make sure every, everyone is, has the knowledge that they need. And something that a lot of new nurses need help with is practicing the IV placements. So this is a model that we're creating right now that has some, some fake blood in it and veins. And we use that silicone material I was talking about earlier. So they can actually use this project to kind of inject and practice doing their IV pokes. And this whole project cost maybe $40 and the ones on the market cost up to thousands of dollars for this. So it's another big, you know, money saver. And uh, we can also do custom skin. So a lot of the models, they will have kind of like super light skin. So we can do different shades of skin as well to practice on different kinds of people. Um, here's another project over here. So this model is used for doing self checks for breast cancer lumps. So we have a kind of a couple of lumps hidden in here. So another education model. So yeah, we have a silicone station. We have a couple of resin printers. Um, yeah, over here we have sewing machine, sewing station. We like to do a lot of custom clothes for like patients who can't really like step into their clothes. Sometimes we add some Velcro to jeans, stuff like that. Uh, we have a cricket over here. We can make signs across the hospital with that. And then over here, we have our build space. So you can come on in here. Let's 
see. Now this space is used mostly with this laser cutter here. Uh, it's a CO2 laser cutter we can, where we can cut acrylic and wood sometimes, mostly acrylic. And a big thing we do for the hospitals, we make these signs that go around the different units. So stuff like this, we can make custom signs, uh, just custom acrylic pieces in this room. And then whenever we need to make a mess, we come in here. So we have our little spray booth. We have our drill press. We got the band saw. Uh, we have a mini CNC mill down there. And then yeah, last couple of stations over here. So this is just the rapid prototyping material, you know, general tools. You might recognize some of them. Um, this is just for like very quick fixes, like the putty material. Uh, we have some Lego tape. Um, we have, you know, drills, files, sewing. Yeah. And then yeah, over here in this back corner, this is our modeling station. So that's where we do mostly all of our 3D modeling when a maker will come down and I'll sit down with them and we'll run through the program and make some models over there. And then lastly, we have our red couch <laughs> area where people just come and hang out sometimes. We have a good window that you can get some sunlight in. But yeah, so those are all the stations of the lab. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Dreamers, learners, and doers. Innovation is something we often associate with tech giants, companies with large, huge budgets, slick offices, and futuristic labs. But this lab right here proves that some of the most powerful ideas are being born inside hospitals right here in the USA. What stuck me the most is that innovation doesn't always start with technology. It starts with people, nurses who see a daily challenge and think there must be a better way, engineers who listen, design, and help bring those ideas to life, it's collaboration in its purest form, where compassion meets creativity. What we are seeing in this lab is a quiet revolution. One prototype, one idea, one conversation at a time. It's a reminder that you don't need a huge tech company address to change the world. You can innovate wherever you are with whatever you have, as long as you have the courage to start. So if you are watching this and you are a nurse, an engineer, a student, a dreamer, a learner, a doer, remember in innovation isn't a title, it's a mindset. You don't have to wait for permission to think differently. This lab, these people, this moment, they show us what dream, learn, do truly means. It's about daring to imagine, learning from every challenge, and doing something that makes a difference. Thank you for watching. And remember, the next great idea could start with you. Please don't forget to hit subscribe like, share, and comment. Until next time, stay dreaming, stay learning, and stay doing.